Welcome to my channel and welcome to my seven and a quarter inch gauge uh, playlist or list of videos. And I just wanted to go through the changes that I've done to my, well, one and only blue loco without the top on. And uh, the changes are mostly here because I re uh, replaced the 4QD controller with a Sabertooth 2x32, uh, so 2x32M controller. And uh, I'm driving that using my home built Wi-Fi controller, which has a Wi-Fi throttle. So the main reason I, I did all this replacement because I wanted to have a loco where I'm not tied to the actual engine with, uh, with cables, so I can have a wireless controller. And the main reason I did this because, well, once in a year or maybe yeah, twice a year, depending on COVID, I go to an open day, which uh, the, one, uh, the first one is going to be tomorrow and i wanted to try how does it feel that i sit on the the trolley which is at the end of the train so obviously the kids can uh, look out instead of looking at my back and i can look at the you know the kids how they behave while i drive the train and obviously for that i needed a wireless controller so this is my lock pilot or lock remote controller which is uh, basically an asp based Wi-Fi chip and that handles the communication with this motor controller so that's giving it commands to what speed and direction to go and then it also has outputs so it will be able to drive my headlights and the cab light and this small board is a soundboard so it would be able to play whistles and station announcement and there is a small speaker at the at the front so it basically does all the thing just like a um, a, like a DCC sound decoder would do on an engine and this is just to control the motor so the whole thing is you know quite compact um, and obviously I was testing it in a garden everything seems to be working fine so the real test is going to be tomorrow well mostly it's going to be an endurance test as well because I will be running this local pretty much throughout the day and uh, it is an open night even so I think we would be running until midnight or 1 a.m so the headlights are going to be used a lot i guess so let me bring you in a little bit closer so this is the saber tooth controller and it can drive two different oh sorry it can drive two motors uh, separately um uh, i believe it is designed for robots so which has like you know two wheels let's say and this is why there are two separate controllers but i'm not using them as separate controllers so they are configured that they drive both of the motors at the same speed and the same direction because then you can reverse them so the uh, the middle two contacts are the battery contacts and these are the two motor contacts and uh, and these are the connections that go to my custom controller so these two is basically the five volts that are provided by this board so that powers my esp and my board so i don't need a separate power supply for that and the white and the blue wires are the serial communication wires between my board and the saber tooth so this is where i can send comments what speed and direction to drive the motors and i can also get information like uh, the current draw on each of the motor driver the temperature of each of the drivers and also the battery voltage so it does all the monitoring as well and this is a you know basically just a serial communication so in my board that i if you haven't watched my other video so i designed this to drive a g scale uh, basically like model trains uh, originally i had a motor controller here so i removed that for this application and i'm just using the two outputs to uh, create the serial communication between the motor driver and my controller and as I said previously this is a so, uh, like a soundboard and a small amplifier so that drives the speaker directly and I also have four outputs here and those drive the the lights so the first two outputs are the headlights which change based on direction the third output actually I'm using it I also have some cab lights and well technically I'm not even using the fourth um, what I thought my, what I could be doing is, I'm not really sure how good the airflow is going to be for the controller. I mean, there is a big grill here, so that's going to let air in as the local drives. So more, probably much, much of the air is going to go that way. There is also a grill up here. Um, and maybe if it gets really bad, what I can do in the future is mount maybe a, like a fan here, which is going to push air down here 
like that way so I could be uh, I should be able to use the fourth output to turn on the fan uh, so I can turn it on from my controller and I think that's going to be fine but for the time being especially tomorrow I'm going to drive it as it is and uh, the temperature or well, the weather is going to be slightly better because in the last couple of days we had like I think yesterday like 40 degrees centigrade uh, tomorrow it's only going to be 29 so that's probably going to be better for this controller I haven't changed anything in a cab so that's the same as before if we move to the front there is no change here I have this small speaker which I should have replaced with a bigger speaker but actually my local store was closed for um, for a few days so this has to do for today uh, hopefully I can replace it with something bigger and then which is also going to be some some somewhat louder this is just a junk speaker I think there is a damage here but again it should suffice for today and I would say this is the main business end uh, which again I haven't touched so this is same as before uh, just to quickly recap I have these two automotive relays these are my main disconnects uh, so I have a switch up here on the on the cab or you can't see that so that way um, which basically just energize the relay and that switches the main sort of 24 volts into the uh, system so I have two bus bars for plus 24 volts and ground uh, I have these relay boards uh, that drive my lights I have this connector which connects to the top of the chassis so I have uh, he headlights both direction tail lights in both direction and the fifth light is is cab light so of course I, I'm you know switching headlights and tail lights uh, together based on based on the direction and this small unit is uh, just a buck converter so it takes 24 volts which is uh, comes from here and then it converts it down to 12 volts and f and that's that's the 12 volts which is being switched by the relays because the lights that I'm using are just uh, regular RM12 um, LED uh, lights you know the normal lights that you can buy and install in kitchen cabinets and also the tail lights are some red automotive uh, tail lights LED replacement lights so all my lights uh, run from 12 volt and this uh, small converter creates the 12 volts from the 24 volts and I also have a shunt resistor this is just to measure um, current draw and and I also have this small unit which uh, calculates uh, consumption so basically I can track how much watt hours I'm getting from the battery so I have an, an overall estimate how much juice is left in the batteries starting the engine hasn't changed so I have this uh, 32 amp fuse so this manual fuse holder I mainly use this so I can definitely know this this fuse holder goes between the two batteries so I know if I disconnect this one there's definitely no power going to any parts of the engine and I have this main switch I turn it on and that basically energizes everything so the two relays come on the buck converter comes on and the two units here come on and and of course nothing happens here because uh, I don't have the throttle turned on and this is my energy meter so it looks like that the whole system is drawing about 100 milliamps on idle and it shows me the battery voltage so I can read the battery voltage here as well and this is the cumulated um, watt hours that I take from the batteries and I think this is not directional so it it doesn't count the regenerative braking but I don't think it's um, you know a lot so I usually use this to have an estimate how much uh, energy I've used from their batteries and this is the Wi-Fi throttle that I've almost completed it runs from this uh, power bank at the moment and um, it needs another box here which I already 3d printed which is going to keep the this battery you know along with the rest of the electronics and I've already made a separate video on that but you can see it's it drives another Wi-Fi module and basically there are buttons and a screen this wheel and then some buttons uh, sorry a keypad here and there is also a vibration motor from an old phone just to give me tactile feedback and if I turn it on then it comes on there is a beep or sorry like a buzz and I can see that it is uh, connected to my uh, local because I can see the Wi-Fi signal and some of the 
uh, response times here and uh, you can probably also see the battery voltage I don't know how well it's going to come through on the camera and I can change the various screens so this is battery voltage this is current draw which is always showing some values I'm not sure why and last one is temperature of the two controllers and uh, maybe I can leave it on that screen so the arrows are red at the moment so it's off and I turn it on this is forward speed and it goes and then it's so surreal seeing this engine go just like my g-scale stuff like you know I'm not sitting on it and I have headlights here which I won't be able to test because the top is not on and this is the sound and I can configure how loud it goes so I just need to do that because it's a little bit uh, uh, well faint at the moment so I have a couple of horn sensation announcements and that's pretty much it and this is how far I have gotten so far and um, I'm, I'm going to make a few more changes to this um, software here on the controller before I go tomorrow but uh, I think I'm pretty much done now so let's see how she goes There is an acceleration and a deceleration built into the loco so it is a little bit difficult to drive especially here there is like a big downhill that way so when it was coming up i had to give like big throttle just to get it moving and then the inertia basically just uh, uh makes it go really fast so i have to be you know careful about the the speed but i'm guessing if i would be sitting on the you know on the driving trolley then that's going to be that's going to have more inertia so um it will be easier to control that way. I think that will be all for today. Thanks for watching and hopefully you will see the video on the open day in a couple of days.